Hello everyone, my name's Amy and I'm a fourth year student on the M Math and Mathematics course. And I'm Nancy and I'm a third year student in my final year of the BFC Maths course. And you may be thinking that our voices sound really similar, and that is in fact because we're twins. So hopefully it's not a bit, um, it's not too confusing for you. Um, we'll try our best to sound a little bit different. Um, so in this video today, we're going to be uh, talking to you a little bit more about what it's like to be a student here at the University of Kent. Um, so the first half of the talk is about the academic side of things, so lectures, um, what support's available, and things like that. And then the final second part of the talk is more about um, non-academic stuff and student accommodation, what the campus is like, and things like that. So let's start with the academic stuff. So these are all the courses we offer here at Kent. So I think all of you should be applicants and you've already applied, so um, you should be able to see your course up here. Um, so there are there is a little bit of flexibility between some of the courses. So um, for example, when I actually applied to, um, to study here, I wasn't on the M Mathematics course, I was actually on the BSc Mathematics course. So I switched to that in my third year, um, and the, the only two courses are pretty much the same up until the third year, so there's a little bit of flexibility with that. Um, also, I think the maths, BSc Maths and BSc Statistics, their first years are the same. Um, so after, at the end of the first year, you would be able to sort between them, but any time after that, you wouldn't. And then also with the year in industry, I think all of our courses actually, except from the um, Mathematics of Secondary Education, which we run uh, alongside Christchurch, all courses you can actually do a year in industry with. Um, so if you haven't applied for it and you feel like you want to do it, um, if you just uh, get in contact with the math school, either give them a call or give them an email, it is a simple sort of online process just to switch you over. Um, if you want to know more about what the ear industry is like, uh, Kaz and Riley have done a talk about that, so definitely give that a watch. Um, the benefit of applying for it now and not waiting until your second year or your first year to, to get on it is that, like Riley and Kaz would have said, um, there's lots of support available for you in first and second year. You have weekly workshops and they set you up on LinkedIn and help you write your CV. Um, so there's lots of support available. Um, so I would, if you're thinking about it, I would apply for it now rather than later. So these are the modules that you can study in your foundation year. So some of you will be on this foundation year course. So these are the modules for maths foundation year and also the actuarial science foundation year. And you can see which ones are applicable by looking in the last two columns of the table. So these are the modules that you can use just to get up to speed um, with maths and get you prepared for your first year of study on the maths course. And if you go on the Kent module catalogue, and search these modules, you'll be able to find a little description about them all if, you, if you're curious and you want to find out more. So same goes with these modules. So these are the first year modules for all of the courses in SUMSAS. So you can see which ones you're going to be studying um, in the table. So there's a mix of things that might be a follow-on from what you've done in A-level or your, your sort of secondary school study. And there's also some new maths here as well. So like I said before, have a look on the Kent module catalogue on the Kent website, and you can find out a little bit more about all of these modules. So scholarship. So um, the scholarship that a lot of people actually find out they um, are eligible for, and they didn't realise they was, was uh, the Academic Excellence Scholarship. So this, this is something you just automatically get. You don't actually apply for this. When you get your A-level results, or uh, when you find out what you're going to get, um, they will just automatically award you the scholarship and they'll email you um, to ask for your bank details and then you get it in free instalments. So this is worth £2,000 in your first year of study. Um, so they, in general, they award it for A-level grades of three A's, but they actually offer a reduced offer if you study maths or a foreign language. So if you achieve an A in either one of them subjects, they'll actually drop it a grade as well. So really, if you're a math student, you only need to get AAB. Um, and if you achieve AAB or you're awarded AAB, you will be eligible for free money. So um, that's quite a handy thing to know. And there's also lots of scholarships available for just general things. So if you're a particularly sporting person or musically talented, um, there's lots of scholarships available. Um, we, we're not experts on the scholarships, are we? So I would definitely recommend going on the Kent website on the Find a Scholarship page and um, 
searching, or they have a big list, and you can type in sort of what, what um, if you're, say, a sporty person, you can search for sports scholarships and see what sort of things you need to do for that. Um, another one to quickly mention that you didn't mention, Amy, was the one that's based on where you live. So oh, if yeah. that you're in an area that not a lot of people go into separately, is it? I think it's based on your postcode and also maybe your financial, might be your parents or something. There's, There's lots of different factors. Is it called? I can't remember what it's called, but you'll definitely be able to find out the scholarship page. That's another big one. And that's worth three thousand pounds, I'm pretty sure. So definitely give that a look up if you feel like you might be um, falling into that sort of category. So I'm sure you're all wondering what first is going to be like. This is the thing that's imminent. This is the first thing you're going to experience at uni. And the general thing to know is that it's, it is fine. So the uni make it really easy for you to settle in. So when you get here, the first week that you have at university will just be a welcome week, so there'll be no lectures. Um, it's just sort of for you to settle in. So the uni help you settle in with your studies, so the maths school will put on events to help you. So is it recharge your maths? The yeah, you do a little, it's not really a test, it's more like a, a little quiz to, me, to make sure you haven't forgotten a lot, because it is really easy to forget a lot of things over summer. Um, so yeah, it's just a little quiz to see if you've remembered Things. And if you, I think if you get below a certain mark, they'll just um, sign you up for um, extra support in the first term. Because I know that when I was coming to uni, I was really worried that I was going to forget lots of things. So it was really helpful to know. I, was, I felt quite reassured when I found that out that I, there'll be support for me. I wasn't just going to get left behind from day one. So if you have forgotten a lot, don't worry because there's lots of support in the first term to make sure you've remembered everything you need to know. And also, in the, some of the modules you do, you do go over things you've seen before. So in Math Methods 1, for example, you, a lot of that, especially if you, haven't, especially if you have done um, further maths, a lot of that is things you've seen before. So um, yeah, some things are similar and some things will be new. So for the math students, we're both math students, we don't know too much about actuarial science, but for math students, things like real analysis, linear algebra, these are the sorts of uh, types of maths you've never seen before. So those things are quite hard, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Do you find that I've, I definitely find that hard to begin with? I think it's just because it's different. But once yeah. you get used to it, and there's lots of support, and with your tutorials as well, so that's something I've just mentioned on the list. So in your first year, you get four hours of contact time a week. So that's like, um, so you get four lectures, and then you also get a tutorial. So that's something that it's more like a classroom. It's something that you'd be used to from school with an academic, sometimes a PhD student and you'll go through like an exercise sheet. So that's what I found that really handy to get my head around the new stuff. Definitely. Some tutorials you have every week if they're bigger groups. So for my Math Methods modules, I had probably about 20 to 30 people in them modules, and I had them every week. But the smaller ones, so with, for the math students, the um, things like real analysis, linear algebra, the pure math stuff, um, I only had them tutorials every other week, but the groups are much smaller. I think I think in mine I had seven. What about you? How many people did you have in yours? So less than ten. Less more than, than ten. five, less than ten. So the, even though you have them every other week, the groups are much smaller, so I felt like I've got more out of them. Mm -hmm. like. mm. And uh, what I did like about the tutorials is that sometimes it's also led by your academic advisor. So this is someone who you can go to for support if you need. They're sort of like a general contact you to have in math school. And they're not just someone that's going to be sat in an office that you've never met before. You'll meet this person every fortnight, so you can get used to No, them. you meet them every week because it rotates. Isn't it? Oh, right. So, yeah, you meet them on a regular basis. So, they get familiar with you and you get familiar with them. So, they're, and it's just nice to sort of have that other person to go to if, you're, if you need help. So, I think the best part about first year is just sort of it's a great time to um, meet new people and really get stuck into things, try something new, join a society. I think that was my favourite part about first year, was just sort of experiencing everything and moving out for the first time, yeah. having to do your washing for the first time, all the things like that are really good fun and I think, yeah, that's so to look forward to definitely. Yeah. So when you go on to stage two, stage three or even stage four, if you decide to go and you in industry or you do a master's, um, yeah, so in the first year, I don't think, I don't know if you mentioned this, but you don't get any choice in your modules, you, everything is compulsory. So it's more about getting everyone on the same page and making sure everyone is ready to go on to second and third year with the same sort of background knowledge. So in stage two and stage three um, is when you start picking your module. So I think in second year you pick, do you pick five for a composer you pick five? That's modules. right. And then in final year and then also in my master's year, I've been able to pick everything except from this year or master's year I had a compulsory dissertation. But apart from that, I've been able to pick absolutely everything. So um, in my third and fourth years, I've done all the maths that I've wanted to do. 
I don't really like statistics very much, so I haven't done any statistics since my first year. Um, I really enjoy algebra, so I've done lots of algebra modules, and I've also done quite a lot of mechanics modules as well, so I really enjoy them. Um, so yeah, you really get to, I think one thing about Kent is they offer such a wide range of modules. They don't just specialise in a particular area, they have lots of um, lecturers who are interested in lots of different parts of math, so I've, I've felt like I've had a really wide range of modules to pick from. Um, and that's quite exciting, I think, because yeah. up until now, you've not really, you've obviously been able to choose your, your subjects, but you haven't ever had any flexibility in what you study within that subject. So when you, when you come to uni, you'll be able to choose exactly what you want to study and learn it from experts as well, so it is really good. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I'm doing a dissertation now, so there is opportunity to do some research if you're interested as well. I know also, um, over summer, they actually offer paid research um, position so there's lots of opportunities to um, if you if you are interested in sort of doing maths at an even further level and maybe thinking about doing a PhD there's lots of opportunities to get experience in, in things that would help you do that. Um, and yeah I actually some of my obviously because I'm in my final year now I've been going for lots of job interviews and in some of my job interviews I've actually had to present things that I've done at uni. So um, I've had to present my final year project. So actually doing these projects, even though they may seem a bit daunting, they give you things to talk about when you're in interviews. Um, one of my projects I did on traffic flow. So um, there's some really, what did you do? Did you do some cryptography? Yeah. So you can do some really relevant, um, exciting maths, which, which you can talk about at an interview. Um, and it's nice to look back on that. You've got definitely. a piece of work that you produced while you're at uni. Um, yeah, I'll just, it was a really good thing to do, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's sort of what the first, second and third or fourth year is like um, at uni. I think, oh no, we've got support now, haven't we? Yeah, so obviously things are great most of the time, but sometimes you do need a little bit of extra support. So we're really lucky at Kent, we've got lots of support available. So firstly, we, if you're struggling um, with your studies, so like academic wise, you'll be finding things a bit hard. Uh, the, the School of Maths have got lots of people in place to help you. So I mentioned before about your academic advisor. They're someone to go to if you've got a general question about your studies and they can point you to the right person. You can also, if you're finding a particular module hard, you can speak to your lecturer after the lecture or you can go and see them in an office hour. And you can also speak to your tutorial leader for that subject as well if you'd rather have somebody different as opposed to your lecturer, um, if you'd rather have their advice. And we also have academic peer mentoring. So this is where second year students will choose for the first years and third year students due to the second years. So that's just another stream of people that you can go to. Sometimes it's nice to hear it from lots of different people because everyone's got their own perspective on different problems. And the people who, have, um, who are doing the academic peer mentoring, these are people who have sat the module um, the previous year. So they, they know exactly, exactly what's hard. Yeah. They know things that you'd be stumped, like tripping up on and things that you are finding difficult. And I feel like they're one of the best people to, people to go to. And actually on the flip side of things, these are paid positions, so if you are in second or third year, you can, um, if you want to get something to write on your CV, on your CV or want to get a bit of experience doing something to make sure you've made the most of your time at uni, um, you can actually put yourself forward for these positions and you are paid as well. So it's a win-win for everyone, <laughs> isn't it? So more generally, the university as a whole have their own support network. So in, we've got our own counselling service, we've got a financial um, support service as well. So all these sort of general um, support networks we've got here at uni as well to complement the academic side of things. Yeah. And we've also got um, our own wellbeing support in-house. So um, there's a team of people um, who are just for math students um, and they can help you with things like maybe in school you've had a bit of extra time in your exams or you've needed a rest breaks in your exams or anything, any sort of special measures you've had in, uh, in school or with exams before. Um, the people in the SimSaf support team support can help you with that. And they also do drop-in clinics, don't they? So if you're just feeling a bit overwhelmed and homesick, um, they're always there to support you. Um, and it's nice because they're just for us. They're, they're based in the Citizen Building too, where all the other uh, SimSaf staff and PhD students and admin staff as well, we're all based in one building. So it's really friendly, isn't it? Really, everyone's really nice and approachable. And there's loads of really, like everywhere you look really, there's support, isn't there? Yeah. Available. Um, so now moving on to student life, um, we'll just first talk about the campus um, because obviously you guys maybe you visited already, but if you haven't visited already, we'll just um, talk through what things are sort of going on on the campus. 
So we've got the big temple and library. It's absolutely massive, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone, whenever my friends come and visit, they always say, oh, it's such a big library. And it really, really is. Um, so they've done up, is it two thirds of it they've done up now? Mm. And there's just one third of it that's left to do up. But it's really, really nice in there. Loads of study space, loads of computers. Um, the thing I like about it the most is that you can go online before you leave your room or your house and you can see where the study space is available in the library. So you yeah, can, it's really, I find that really handy. You can see whether there's many computers left or desks free. I think they've got little sensors under the desk or something. So you can tell whether the library will be busy. Um, I actually do find I study more in the Simpson building, but there's loads of places available on campus um, where you can study. Most of the uh, accommodation blocks have got a study hub, so Parkman have got a big one. Um, and yeah, there's loads of places to study, really. We've got Cafe Nero, some people study in there. Um, all the eat, like eateries, so um, there's loads of places to eat and drink on campus, and there you see people studying as well. And the accommodation's really set up for you to study in as well. You've got a nice big desk. Nice big desk. You've got your Ethernet cable if you need it, and everything like that. So we have a night travel campus as well, a venue, so that's open three nights a week um, in term time. And actually, in Freshers' Week, it's open. I think it's open like every day, isn't it? So you mm. most of the time, welcome weekends is like Saturday, Sunday, and I think they open every night. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then they don't open on that final Sunday before you have to start your lectures. Um, but yeah, that's the, I, I really like having it on campus because it's from most accommodation blocks, it's like a five, ten minute walk away, isn't it? Um, it's only for kitchens as well, so you can bring guests if you, I think you can bring one guest and you can sign them in. So if you have friends come and visit, they can, you can bring them too. But on the whole, it's just Kent students in there. So I find it really friendly. Do you like it there? It's a really fun place. Yeah, they do see nights as well on a Wednesday. Venue is like the, it's called Wednesday, isn't it? They, it's like a sports night, so all the sports teams go out on a Wednesday. People go out in their sports outfits and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. We've had lots of special guests as well. I think we've had the Chapel Brothers. Gemma Collins, we've had. All sorts of people, so yeah, it's just a lot of fun there. I really like it there. Um, we've got the gym on campus, obviously, and uh, the sports pavilion. And I think now, actually, from this September, if you're living on campus, you get a gym membership included into your accommodation fee, which I think is really nice. So if you're not maybe a dedicated gym goer, but you feel like you might fancy going down and then, now and again, you've now got your gym membership included, which I think is really nice. Um, two co-ops on the campus, so there's one down in Parkwood, because there's lots, I think half of the bedrooms are down in Parkwood, aren't there? So there's lots of, and it's slightly away from the centre of campus, so there's loads of um, facilities down there. Um, but we've got the main co-op in central campus, and then a slightly smaller one in Parkwood. We've got the cinema as well, with the theatre and the Goldbankian. That's also a nice place to eat and study, I find. The Goldbankian is really Yeah, nice. that's a nice place. And then finally, we've got the doctors and the pharmacy on campus. So one thing that people always forget to do is to change their doctors when they come to the university, so make sure you do that. As soon as you know you're definitely coming here, um, sign up to the doctors. And then there's a pharmacy right next door. So if you've got any repeat prescriptions or things like that, um, it's right on campus. So it's really easy to access. So the Simpson Building, this is the home of the math school. So maths also share this building with the business school. So we have half of it. So there are three lecture theatres in the building. And I would say most of the time I do have lectures in Simpson, but expect to have lectures elsewhere as well. I'd say like 70% probably for me. Yeah. But so you can have lectures all over campus, but it's nice that we've got slightly more in Simpson because it's a really nice place to study. So I'm pretty sure you could probably find pictures of all of these buildings, all the lecture theatres online somewhere. Yeah, I think most of the university facilities, like all their rooms, accommodation, library, even just general campus, I think it's. I think if you go on like the virtual campus tour, you can click in all the rooms, and they've got three D cameras set up in pretty much everywhere, even the corridors, <laughs> so you can see what it's like to be here. So, so it's definitely worth a look because they're amazing places to study. Yeah, Simpson's a really, everyone always comes to Hamlet Simpson and come and visit. It's lovely, isn't it? And if you've been already, you'll know. But if you haven't, then it's definitely worthwhile. So as well as the lecture theatres, we also have seminar rooms. So that this is the sort of place you'd have one of your smaller classes and maybe even your second and third year you may even have lectures in the semi rooms because the classes get slightly smaller as you progress through and pick, start picking your modules. So as well as the lectures and seminar rooms, we also have PC rooms as well. So in maths you'll find that you won't be using your graphical calculators and your calculators anymore. You'll, the, the, um, you'll learn how to do basic coding. And this software is much more powerful than your graphical calculator anyway. So, yeah, you learn how to make use of mathematical software. And some of this is actually what professional um, 
like mathematicians or even data scientists and things like that that's actually what you do in industry so it's quite nice to get used to um, what you would be going on to use in a professional sense as well. So especially for those of you who are on the financial courses we have our own Bloomberg suite as well so the setup in there is exactly the same as what you'd find on the training floor of a financial company so that's really really nice for you to have I think it's a really good facility especially for the financial students. So it's, um, we've also got study space as well, so we've got lots of different kinds of study space. On this slide, on the right hand side picture, you can see this is one of our social study spaces. She's like right here. Yeah. So this is like a social study space, so where the mouse is with the whiteboard, that's where all the lecturers make their tea and coffee. And if you sit um, and do your studying on these desks around here, you might be able to catch a lecture and ask them a question. So you can also see, I think, in this picture... Like this is an doors. office here, isn't it? So the, the doors at the back of the picture are like the yeah. lecturer's offices. And they're really set up for you to go in and ask questions and they've got whiteboards and tables so it's not like you'll be stood over someone at their computer. It's a really, really nice place to go and um, ask the questions. Yeah. So societies, so there's so many societies here at Kent. Obviously this is not an exhaustive list. I've put a few things up in there which I thought might be interesting for some people. Um, I usually do this talk with um, another ambassador called Katie and her and some of her friends actually set up this Where's my mouse here? This pen pal society here. So um, if there's not something that you like, you can you can set set up a society like Katie did, um, and the uni actually the student union actually give you some funding to do that. So if you need like a banner for Freshers Fair or you want to go on a trip, uh, the Kent Union will actually help you do that and give you a little bit of a budget and then help you set it up. Um, there's sports societies, there's academic societies, so we've got our math society which is free for all math students and similarly we have the Invicta Actuarial Society as well, so these are all run by students as well so if you are interested you can become um, part of the committee and that is another thing to talk about at an interview or put on your CV because you can get like leadership experience to show that you've really thrown yourself into uni and made the most of it. Kent dance is really big isn't it, cheerleading is really big um, there's actually everything, so if you're interested, go on the Kent Union website and you can scroll through and see what they offer. Something that we did, we went and did a rock climbing, didn't we? That was quite fun. So what a nice thing about these societies um, is that in Freshers Week, and about the first few weeks, they'll offer taster sessions, so you don't have to commit yourself to joining this random like snowboarding society or go and you don't have to pay a lot of money, you can give, you can give things a go in in the first couple of weeks. And, and they're really keen for you to do that as well, aren't they? So it's really, really nice. And also think, like, when you're mixing with loads of new people, it's something, it's kind of a nice thing to go and do, to sort of bond and... With your new housemates. With your new housemates, with your new course mates. There's loads of things you can do um, to sort of get to know each other better and find who you want to be friends with and things like that. Um, so, yeah, absolutely anything you can think of, um, societies-wise. There's so much Hogwarts society. Um, yeah. yeah, they play Quidditch. Is it something Quidditch like that? Yeah, something like that on land. Yeah, I don't know. If I don't know if that's what it's called. I'm sure it's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got lots and lots of accommodation available for you in your first year. I think it's pretty much um, certain that you'll get a bedroom in your first year. It, no, if you firm us, it is guaranteed that you'll get a bedroom. But it is first come first serve. So if you know you want to come here put your choice in straight away mm. because you're more likely to get your first choice. So we've got lots of different kinds of bedrooms, so we've got things on the more expensive end and we've also got more budget friendly accommodation as well. But the thing to note is that all the accommodation has got exactly the same stuff in it. You'll still get all the facilities that you need, you'll still get your kitchen if you're catered and you still have a bit of like a good desk, won't you? Yeah. And so yeah, it's I think certain people will prefer different accommodations and if you go online you can have a look at the 360 bedroom tour and you might have had a chance to look at accommodation already if you've been to an open day but for those of you who haven't had a chance these 360 bedroom tours I think are really really good. These are all the bedrooms available so I think I, I, think I did it so these ones at the top maybe yeah most ones at the top are the self-catered and then these ones at the bottom and also King's, uh, King's no, their case that's the King's College is the catered Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. So all these four at the bottom are all catered accommodation and these ones at the top are self-catering. So they're all prices on here if you want to have a look. So pause the video and you can read more about um, each of the bedrooms. I did take some of the Kent website though, so I would probably go on the Kent website as well and you'll be able to find more information. I do think, like, the main thing is you do get your pay for. So, like... For example, cheering is really new, if you cheering for that, you get an ensuite. So this is quite a pricey option. But then the Parkwood, Parkwood houses, a little bit older, 
you do have to share bathroom, but then they're a lot more affordable. So you've got to decide what's important to you. Do you want to be catered? Do you want an ensuite? And once you've sort of thought about all the things that are important to you, picking accommodation is quite easy. But like Nancy said, at the end of the day, it's only a bed, isn't it, and a bathroom. So they're all you've got every, in all the all the rooms. You've got everything you need. Um, the only difference really is sort of the styles and where they're located on campus and things like that. So, like we said earlier, there's three D cameras in all the bedrooms, so you can sort of get not permanently, <laughs> yeah, not permanently. <laughs> put three D cameras in the bedrooms and take three D pictures, so you can have little mini tours of the um, of the bedrooms if you want to sort of visualise a bit more what it's going to be like. But yeah, like I said earlier, if you do want, um, if you want your first choice, things like Turing is really popular, so that goes really quickly. So if you know what you want, pick it straight away, and then you're more likely to get your first choice. So Canterbury is a city. So it's quite a small city, isn't it? But there's still loads going on. You've got everything you need. You've got everything you need. Um, so there's sort of two separate parts of town. There's the bottom part of town, which is quite old. So that's showing like the middle. Yeah, the here top. at the top. It's like the older part of town. There's lots of little independent um, cafes and restaurants and pubs. And it's really lovely. The cobbled streets, um, the cathedral as well. So the cathedral's mentioned here or shown here. Um, so you actually graduate the cathedral, which I think is quite cool. This is the bottom part of town here. Here, is it here or is it just back? So this is our top left picture. This is our favourite weather to do there. Yeah. You get a lot of kenshins going in there, we really like it. And in the summer this is really lovely, you see lots of people sitting in these gardens. Because um, it's a really nice, it's just a really nice place isn't it, in Canterbury. Yeah. Uh, and this is the newer part, in the bottom right picture here, this is the newer part of town. So you've got all the shops, like they've got Primark, Tesco Metro, River Top Island, Shop, Top Shop, Shop Fenix. Um, all the sort of high street typical shops that you can expect you can find in, is it called Whitefriars? Whitefriars. Whitefriars, that's the shopping part of town. Um, and yeah, I just really love Canterbury, it's such a nice city. There's three universities in Canterbury actually. You've got Kent, Canterbury Christchurch, and also UCA, the Art, Art Uni. So there's loads going on, it's, a really, it's got a really good student feel, I think. There's loads of nice bars, there's a couple of nightclubs as well. Um, and how you, you, can, you can walk into town, can't you? We do. Yeah, we walk, so we live in, in town now. So you, uh, accommodation is only um, guaranteed. Uh, for like in the second or third year for international students. So if you are a UK student, you do have to move out into town in your second and third years. But we prefer living in town. We now live together, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, just this year now, first year we've lived, lived together. Um, but it's quite nice because you get, in your first year, you get a feel of what it's like to live on campus. And then in your second and third years, if you decide to move into town, you get a feel of what it's like to be a resident of the actual town. And um, you're really part of the city, aren't yeah. you? I really like living in town. And yeah, so like I was about to say, um, there's these uni buses that go around. So in like middle of the day, they tend to come like every 10 minutes really, don't they? Yeah, so it's really, compared to where we're from, it's really regular, isn't it? Yeah, so but if you're a Londoner, maybe not so regular as London. But yeah, I think it's pretty good. You can walk into town, but the buses run pretty much all the time. And all night. And they, yeah, they run in, on that hour every hour, or so, along their lines, don't they? It's sort of every hour in the night. So I think you can actually, if you buy a bus ticket in the day, you can actually use it until that... 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. the next day. Yeah. So if you end up going out and you stay at the bar quite late or go to the club, if you you can use your um your bus ticket that you use to get into town in the daytime to do a bit of shopping, you can then use that again in the night. So I think a bus ticket is like three pounds a day. Or something. It might have gone up slightly. Three pounds something. It was I remember in my first year it was two pounds ninety, but it's three pounds something now, um, and you can use that all day, and that's a student ticket. And also we're really close to the beach too. So this picture down here is. Whitstable, so they do park run in Whitstable, don't they? So you can get the bus to park run in the morning if you feel like it. Or also, there's a park run uh, on campus. On campus, well, it's like the edge of campus, isn't it? Mm. Um, in Parkwood. So I think in your first year, sometimes you'd like to go home, and even throughout uni, it's nice to visit home. So um, we're quite lucky in Canterbury to be quite well connected to the rest of the country. So, first of all, we've got two train stations in Canterbury, and they both um, going to London. So from Canterbury West you can get the high speed train into London in about 50 minutes I think it is. I think so it's 40. So it's it's less than an hour. So it's really, really quick. And then obviously from there, once you're in London, you can get wherever you need to go from there. And we're also lucky to have a National Express stop on campus as well. So and in town. And two. Two. So there's one on campus and one in town. So for those of you who haven't used the National Express before, it's a bit slower than the train, but it can be a lot, lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. So um, from there, you can get a coach into the Victoria coach station, and 
at Victoria Coach Station, there's connections to the whole of the UK. It's probably about two hours, isn't it, to get the coach into London, something like that. But it's sometimes, if you're on a budget, it can be a really, really good option. So um, we also have um, easy access to get the Eurostar. So if you fancy a little trip to Paris, um, <laughs> yeah, so it goes, the Eurostar goes from Ashford. We're probably like, would you say, 15, 15 minutes, 20 20. minutes on the train from Ashford. So, and also for international students too. So if you're from Europe, um, like if yeah, from France, Brussels, anything like that. I think with Eurostar we're in Amsterdam now. So Is it? yeah, so lots of places you can go from Canterbury. And for those of you who are from Medway, there might be a few of you. Me and Amy are from Medway. Um, for those of you who don't know, we also have another campus based in Medway. We have lots of campuses. We have one in Tunbridge, don't we? And we also have one in, I think we have one in Brussels, Athens, maybe. Anyway, so for those of you who are from Medway, because of this other campus in Medway, we offer a free shuttle bus that takes you to and from the Medway campus. So that's a really good option. Me and Amy have definitely done that lots of months when we're in Canterbury and we need to get home. We can get it back to Medway for free. So, perfect. So obviously, usually at the days we get people to ask questions, but obviously you can't do that now. There is a, a um, live, is it a Q&A session at two o'clock uh, on Saturday? So if you do have any questions that aren't listed up here, um, definitely sort of join in on that and ask us. So there's going to be, I think there's going to be academics there and some student ambassadors too. So anything you feel like you want to ask, um, definitely join in on that. So shall we just go through a few of these? Yeah. Pick out our favourites. Um, we've mentioned the flexibility one already, really, haven't we? Um, and also the year in industry. So if you're not sure, I'd say just go on it anyway, because you're going to get access to all of the um, tutorials mm -hmm. um, already. In terms of holidays, we get, we're quite lucky to have lots of holidays at uni. So you'll come here probably late September, have a month off for Christmas, then you'll come here for the second term, then you'll get a month off for Easter, then you'll do your exams, and then you generally get between two and three months off in summer, which is lovely. Yeah, so every time to go on holiday. <laughs> yeah, definitely, or go travelling if you feel like it. Or also get internships too. So if you feel like you don't want to commit to the year in industry, um, our summer's really long, so usually you're done by like, the latest I've ever been done is mid-June. So you've got all that time until mid-September to get an internship. And you did last summer, didn't you? Yeah. Lots of people do that. Um, and actually, Narali probably mentioned, um, in if you've watched the year in industry video, Narali probably mentioned she did her year in industry last year, and actually finished her year in industry in July, and then went on did an in internship after that before coming back this year for her final year. So it's yeah, a perfect option if you want to get some work experience. You don't want to just leave your studies for a whole year. It's the perfect middle. There are so many companies out there that do the year in uh, internship internship program, and Summer. it's nice to get your foot in the door as well because sometimes they do offer you a job after you've done your internship. So it's a really good option to have. Books, um, I think books is a good one, isn't it? So you don't generally need to buy books for maths, everything's available with a library or online. The only thing that they might recommend you buy is the stats table, so you might have seen these before. I don't think actually you do study these in A-levels anymore. I think you all use your calculators now. But yeah, there's it's only about, I've got mine for second hand, or like £3 on Amazon, it's, it's like a table of statistical numbers, so. And they also have about, I'd say there's like 20 copies in the library. There's, lo yeah, there's loads available. So. But they, it's what you get in your stat, probability and stats exam, you'll be given this exact table. So although you can use your calculator or look them up online, um, it's better to be used to using the table because that's what you're having exam. But you don't have to buy it. But if you do really want to buy your own, it's only about a tenner. Mm. brand new or you get it second hand as well so i think the only last thing we should mention is probably the social media so we've got lots i of think what about this i quite like the exams one so ken some people do exams in january chris like yeah january exams in the summer but at ken at the moment they're all in the summer um but some uni students sort of spread out but we do ours all at the end and then yeah the social media i think all of the social media for SimSess is under the sort of SimSess handle isn't it i don't I think so it's i think instagram, instagram is uni ken i'm gonna look it up now i think on instagram is uni ken Simsat. but they're all really generally quite easy to find and i'm sure that um, you probably have some correspondence which will direct you that way anyway but they're really really good because you can see what it's like what current students are doing at the moment and it's a good way to ask questions as well to, to actual students here at the uni yeah so instagram is uni ken Simsas. i think twitter is probably the same and if you just type in uh, SimSAS on Facebook, I'm sure it will come up. There's actually a Facebook page now, isn't there, for the new students, so if you join that, I think it's called Sim New SimSAS Student 2020 or something like that. All of our ambassadors have got profiles in there, we've all made a um, bio so you can see what, a bit more about us. And you can ask us questions as well. Um, and then also you'll be able to sort of see who's going to be in your course when you come here in September and you can maybe make some friends before you get here. So you have a friendly face for you, waiting for you when you get here, and you're not just on your own, you might recognise someone, so that's always quite nice. 
makes you a bit more reassured. But I think that's it, isn't it? I don't think we've got anything else to mention. No. So yeah, thank you, thank you everyone for watching. If there was a question that we didn't go through on this PowerPoint and you do want to ask it, then the live stream is probably the perfect chance to. Yeah, at two o'clock. Or well, if you're watching this after the event on Saturday, um, you can always Facebook message or um, Instagram direct message or if you mass want to... social media. Yeah. Or also Kerry, is it, I think it's Simsas UG admissions. Or if you just go on, you've probably had correspondence with her already. Um, if you just like sort of email the, the um, math school or give them a phone call, um, you can ask any questions that you feel like you have. Okay, thank you. Everyone. Thank you.